And, and so, some, somebody at some point licked a beaver's butthole and was like, that tastes like vanilla. And raspberries. And raspberries. Yeah. <sighs> SJ. Anyway, let's let's get on to some tweets. Let's do that. Starting with Matt Walsh. Starting on a high note. Um, so he's been going on an anti-Pitbull tirade recently. Um, of course he is. Oh, okay. So the victims ended up in prison. No, I, I'm talking about like they were victims of the Catholic Church. They are the victims of the sexual abuse, which messed them up. They didn't. They couldn't talk to anyone about it. They couldn't get the help that they would need from that. They couldn't get the therapy. And as a result of that, it messed up their lives and sent them on a downward spiral that for some of them ended in crime. And so they were in prison for unrelated things. But like a part of what sent them on the criminal path was being sexually abused as a child. So it's not that they it's not that they got abused and then were sent to prison for the abuse. So I just need to clarify that. Anyway, so Matt uh, Matt Walsh has been going on an anti pitbull tirade recently, um, which if you actually there there was a study where they they looked into the uh, evidence for a genetic link for a dog's behavior and its breed, um, and they found that um, genetics account for less than ten percent of a dog's behavior, and so like the vast majority of the personality traits of a dog are environmental factors it's on how, it's on how it's raised how it's raised mostly and uh, they actually they specifically went out of their way and mentioned pit bulls and um how like they like they are not inherently aggressive they're not any more aggressive than and than any normal dogs what happens is that people who want aggressive dogs tend to get pit bulls hear that pit bulls are aggressive dogs so they buy pit bulls and then they raise them to be aggressive dogs they do the same thing with Doberman Pinschers and Rottweilers. Yeah. yeah. They they hear that they are like muscly aggressive animals and then they grab them. I mean, and... there's also there's also the fact that they look scary. Well, they can look I, scary. <laughs> Depend, de I, depends when you I get them. I have a... I have a pity and he looks more stupid than scary. Yeah, I was yeah, I was just <laughs> I, I had some pictures that I've seen recently going through my head. I'm like, no, no, those ones don't look scary, but they can look scary. <laughs> I, I'll um, say this. It the the most loving dogs and maybe to a uh to to a high degree but the most loving dogs i have ever seen for the most part have been pit bull mixes of some kind usually some kind of bulls. something about that breed makes them very very attached to people very very affectionate um and, it, and it's i only have me as the anecdote but the there's two pit bulls that I've been helping my friend with uh, during the subathon. That's why I've popped off uh, on and off repeatedly and refunded time because I'm helping take care of his animals. I have one here. My grandma raised one. Um, the a theory that's always kind of bounced around in my head is that because they are so loving and so attached uh, as dogs, it makes it that much easier for people to to harm them and turn them into whatever kind of weapon they're trying to make at that point. And that's not the pit bull's fault in any way, shape or form. That is almost all that is always just the person. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's kind of a tangent. Like that's, that's kind of tangential to this, even though that's exactly what Matt's talking about. The main thing I want to focus on here. So he says, um, someone points out there's 20 million pit bulls in the U S and 20 annual deaths attributed to pit bulls. Um, and pools are apparently 20 times as deadly to which Matt says, Oh, only 20 human beings horrifically mauled to death by someone's pet. Well, never mind then quick question though. How high does the number need to be before you might consider it a problem? So I saw that and I was like, I seem to recall Matt Wa Walsh saying some things about, you know, COVID only being, you know, 1% deadly or something like that. So I did a, did a little search on his timeline, found Omicron looks to be about 40 times less lethal than the earlier strains of COVID, which, uh, which itself was non-fatal in well over 99% of cases. To which I would say, well, Matt... Um, how many deaths do we need? How many deaths do we need before, uh, before we might consider it a problem? 
because there's 1.1 million as of now. So why are you worried about the 20 people that die from dog attacks? That it's not a genetic factor in the dogs. It's how people raise the dogs. But putting on a mask is too much? It's Getting a it's vaccine the, is too much? It's It's the same thing as... I mean, we mentioned it earlier on this stream. Whenever you're the type of person that will always use, well, whatever works, well, whatever works, well, whatever works, like for your argument at the time, if you do that for every argument you make, which is what Matt Walsh is doing, obviously, uh, eventually, eventually somebody can take one argument you've made and another argument you've made and say, well, these two things, the logic here is completely different. I guess you just ad hoc all your logic, too. Yeah. Anyway, Matt Walsh is an idiot, and he's doubling down on this whole pit bull thing. Um, personally, like, I'm I'm looking in the chat. There's like people challenging me on this, and it's like, yeah, I I've seen a study that attributes less than ten percent of a dogs' behavior to genetics, and there are people pushing back on me on that. I don't know. I haven't done an exhaustive search of the literature. Maybe you're right. Maybe there is a bigger genetic component to specifically aggression with dogs that could be breed specific. I don't know. That's not the point here. The point here is that Matt's worried about 20 people dying a year of dog attacks, but he's not worried about 1.1 million people dying in, how long has it been since COVID started? Two years now? Three? Don't you know though? He's a theocratic fascist. Hey, hey Cyrus. Yeah? Look who I found. Die. <laughs> <laughs> so SJ Thomason is next. Oh, SJ. I wasn't aware Yu-Gi-Oh was a religion. See, that's, that's the thing. I so I pulled this tweet and then forgot that she existed. <laughs> you remembered she existed I, for long enough. To pull a tweet. <laughs> oh, I, she's just so forgettable. Vice. By this definition. Okay, let me let me read the tweet because like, yeah, you should you so, should read it. Is is evolution a religion? A religion is a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. So my children Every... are my religion. My fucking server is my religion. Apparently, everybody who is neurodivergent and has found themselves with a hyperfixation or special interest, those were all that's, religions. That's religion. Every yeah. one of them. Food is my religion. You but, you ascribe supreme importance to survival by eating? Yeah. Weird. Water too, actually. Yeah, the religion of water? water. The religion of wet. Come be a priest of the moist. <laughs> <laughs> um so but what what really amuses me here is that SJ is Catholic now, right? I'm not I'm not wrong there. No, she's you, Catholic. You mentioned now. that earlier too. Yeah. Um yeah. the official stance of the Catholic Church is that evolution happened. Evolution is a real thing. So if evolution's a religion, then the Pope has to be able to be both Catholic and another religion simultaneously. Yeah. Remember, this is a person who is a teacher. This is a person yeah. who, is, who is a teacher. She, she teaches She teaches people. at a university. Yeah. And, and, and yet, I wonder, I wonder what would happen. Because you know, you know her university has to know about the, the type of shit she gets up to online, right? They have to know. Yeah, they can't not know. D do you think she ever has, like, conversations with the rest of the staff about that? Or do they all just, like, have a hush-hush? No, 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 that's the crazy one. No, 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 we don't. <laughs> yeah, I, that's how I would be around her. Uh, Pumpkin J says, my religion is the other F thing, not the food as much. Oh! It's like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was considering saying something like that, but then it's like, no, that's that plays directly into the apologist, oh, they're not Christian because they want to sin thing. It's like, yes, my religion, like, I abandon Christianity for the religion of having sex. I remember, I remember reading Da Vinci Code as a Christian, and the way it described, like, pagan sex rituals, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, yes, I was right all along, and so I remember reading Bart Ehrman's Lost Christianities and when he described the Christian sex rituals that apparently happened in some early sects, that's S-E-C-T-S, not S-E-X. Um, 
I remember thinking that sounds like that scene from the Dan Brown novel. Mm-hmm. Um, now, to be clear, the early Christian sex cults, the only sources we have from that are uh, very dubious in nature. It's like this, uh, like, he he was not a member of that cult. He was trying to make it look ridiculous. And um, like some of the things he claimed to know, the only way he could have possibly known is if he was like a member and taking part in it. But he very much vehemently denied ever having been a member taking part of anything. But somehow he knew all the secret stuff that they wouldn't show outsiders. Mm -hmm. So it's like either you were lying and you were a member of the sex cult. Or you're lying about what the sex cult does. And it's more likely that he was lying about what the sex cult does because he was just trying to gross people out and in order to scare them away from joining. Yeah. Vice has sects on the brain. Sects. Is that is that just compartmentalization? That feels like that's just brain compartmentalization. The different sects of the brain. <laughs> Maybe. Um yeah, anyway, so Naramdaput says, uh, does anyone sus ascribe supreme importance to evolution? Like, no. Not, no, not really. Like, that's, it's almost the whole focus of my channel, but, like, when I'm not making videos that are about revol er, revolution, evolution, I haven't had nearly enough alcohol tonight to be talking like this. Um, yeah, when I'm not actively working on a video that is specifically about evolution, I'm usually not thinking about evolution there might be something that comes up where it's like, ooh, because of how involved I am in this stuff for my YouTube channel, I know this fun fact that I can now share with everybody as they roll their eyes at me again for going off on a tangent that's unrelated to anything. But that's... Often that's not about evolution. That'll be like, that could be about anything science-related. I've had people try to get me to talk about politics when I'm not on stream because it's what I talk about on stream and on video. And I'm just sitting there at the card shop. So what do you think about this? I think I don't want to talk about that. I think I'm here playing a game of Magic the Gathering with all of you, and that's what I'm focused on. <laughs> but it's MTG, Surus. Oh, no, get get it out. Go. Go away. Stop. Steven Meyer. You remember Steven Meyer? So this I was... Don't. An so this was you don't remember Steve, he's the philosopher of science who the discovery institute loves oh he wrote the book darwin's doubt i think oh okay yeah so yeah this is an article on evolution news about how the sand scorpion uh feels vibrations in the sand and it, like it can't really see anything but it feels its prey vibrating in the sand and that's how it knows where it is and how to catch it yeah. Um, so Stephen Meyer says, but how does the scorpion know the propagation speeds of the longitudinal and transverse waves? And how does it know how to calculate the distance? This is a simple freshman physics problem if someone gives you the calibrated speeds. So the idea being there that like, you know, the like if you were to actually like write it out on paper and try and calculate where this thing is going based on vibrations, like it would be freshman physics level stuff. And a scorpion is not capable of doing freshman physics, therefore it must be designed by God. To right. which I would respond, Stephen, have you ever thrown a ball? I was about to say throwing a ball as my example. Because it is, it's the same fucking thing. Yeah, no, because it's throwing a ball is such a fucking complicated maneuver. And I, I forget the exact number, but it's something like if you release the ball like... 0 0.01 seconds too late or too early it'll completely miss whatever you're aiming for and yet somehow like you get your, professional your pictures that. your brain just does that it know but it doesn't do the math it just you know from practice and like you, you like an experiment and it's, and actually oh I, it's it's actually your brain pre-plans it because there's a delay between when your brain says do something and when your arm actually does the thing. And so your brain actually takes that into account when telling when telling your arm when to release the ball or your hand when to release the ball. Because that difference between when it leaves your brain and when it gets to your hand, that's enough to make you completely miss the target. That's that's how precise throwing is. Mm -hmm. But like you don't have to think about that when you're doing it. You just do it. Same thing with the scorpion. It's not thinking about it. It's not doing the math. It's just doing the thing. 
Yep. And it's it's we he he you would think he would know better. Like this is this is it's one of two things. It is either that he is so engrossed and enamored in the academia of it that the simple kind of just like flitted away from his mind or he's just being deliberately dishonest because it, it financially benefits him to be that I don't know I haven't seen enough of Meyer's stuff to make that kind of judgment like there there are a few apologists that I'm like for the most part I'm like they they could just be exercising extreme cognitive dissonance because it actually um, um, I've I forget the source for this. Take it with a grain of salt, but I remember reading that um, the more intelligent someone is, the better they are at engaging in cognitive dissonance. So that's how you can wind up with really, really smart people sincerely holding on to really, really stupid beliefs. Mm -hmm. So that's how you could get a PhD geneticist like Georgia at Answers in Genesis who has to be smart. She has to have a certain level of intelligence because she got her fucking PhD in genetics. That's not an easy thing to do. Um, so like she has to have a certain level of intelligence, but like, and, and going through genetics, she has to know that young earth creationism is not possible, but she could be sincere. Didn't she literally say that she went through the classes almost like automatically on autopilot, not believing any of the stuff in her classes just so that she could get the the piece of paper. Probably. Like she, I know, she, like she I know went in deliberately with I that. know Patricia Engler has a similar thing like that on, on uh, Answers in Genesis Canada where she talks about, like she'll, she'll often talk about her experience in the classroom. Um, and that's one of the things that was like, well, when I'm taking the test, I have to give them the answers that they want sort of yeah. thing. Um, I know, I think it was John Wells. Um, I think he's a seventh day Adventist. I, I know he, I might have the name wrong. Um, but I, I think I, I think I have it right. Let me just look it up. Give me two second Google. John Wells. No, not the American filmmaker. John Wells creationist. Jonathan Wells. American author, theologian, advocate of pseudoscientific argument of intelligent design. Unification Church. Um, so yeah, he, uh, if I recall correctly, he actually was a creationist before he did any school and his church actually funded him going to school specifically so that he could get the degree so that he could then come out and say like, well, I have a degree in biology. I'm a P I have a PhD in, I think it's biology. Um, went to Berkeley. I don't know. Oh, he's got a whole section on his Wikipedia called AIDS Denialism. That's nice. That feels wonderful. He, okay, so he's got a PhD in molecular and cellular biology from Berkeley. Um, so yeah, he went to school specifically to get that degree specifically so that he could then come out and be like, I have a PhD in cellular biology and or molecular and cellular biology. Therefore, I know what I'm talking about. Therefore, evolution's a lie. It's just argument from authority. Yeah, no, that's that's all that is. Yeah. Anyway, next we got Prager. U says, "Don't look to the government to fix your life, but it's okay to look to the government to fix your revenge." Or is Don't it look to the this, this is one of the ones that I was looking at when I was uh, responding to the death penalty thing. Here, maybe I can just... Uh, if I can... That, that moment when you have to remember that the death penalty is literally just catharsis for victims. Like, that's functionally it's, what it ends up being. It's not even that. It's not even that. Um, I, there was a study that compared um, victims' families in a non-death penalty state and in a death penalty state. And they found in the non-death penalty state, they had significantly better mental health outcomes in the long term. And they uh, like they, they dealt with everything better than whatever. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm mangling words here. But um, yeah, basically what they found was that the death penalty doesn't actually even provide relief for the families. It doesn't even provide the because, closure that people say it does. Because the thing is, in order like this is this is the argument um, like. The whole thing is that um, we need to be careful with the death penalty. We, we want to make sure that we only execute the guilty people. 
Um, therefore, we need to make sure that it's like this long drawn out process where we re-examine everything several times over. And so in non-death penalty cases, the person just goes to jail and that's that's the end of it. The victim's families get to move on with their lives. Whereas in death penalty cases, they keep ha- it keeps getting dragged back up repeatedly and bringing them back into one of the worst days of their lives. So long term, that is not good for your mental health. So it doesn't actually help. So um, prop that over what? a bit. I get to watch a Vice Rhino video with Vice Rhino? You get to watch a short, Vice Rhino short. Same thing. What about opponents' argument that an innocent person may be executed? And now with DNA testing and other advanced forensic tools, it is virtually impossible to execute an innocent person. I did cut out a significant portion of the video there that was not relevant to the point that I was trying to make with it. Um, this is one of the struggles that I have with the shorts is like, I don't like to cut parts out of the videos that I'm responding to because that feels dishonest. So just coming clean here, I did cut a significant chunk of the video out there, but it was irrelevant to the point that I was making. Yeah, we have tools like DNA evidence that would be operated by government employees. Dennis, you 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 do know that it's the government that looks for this evidence, right? You do you, do you trust the government? Like you wouldn't trust the government with managing the sand in the Sahara Desert apparently, but you trust them in matters that are literally life and death. Someone explain this to me. How is it that they can say that big government is always bad, you shouldn't trust the government with anything, the government makes everything less efficient, but, oh, no, when it comes to uh, executing murderers, they have a 100% success rate in only executing guilty people. They never botch that. That's the one thing the government does right, apparently. There's totally not a whole ass list of exonerated death row inmates or anything. Meanwhile, the whole last list of exonerated death row inmates, including ones from from past 2010, when such DNA oh. evidence should have made it impossible. No, that was um, it. The list goes further than that, um, and several of them were exonerated posthumously. Yeah, so don't look for the government to fix your life, but you can look to the government to. And this is their whole argument: is that like, well, here, let's. Let's go watch the PragerU video, at least part of it. That's easily proven. Imagine that the punishment for murder were the same as the punishment for driving Speed over the speed though. limit. Wouldn't that be little murder and thereby cheapen human life? Of course it would. No, Society bad. teaches how bad an action is by the punishment it meets out. And what about the- no. This, this, no, okay, no, that's- yeah, no, 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 that's wrong. That's not the part that I want to talk about, though. This is okay. the part that I want to talk about. The pain inflicted on the loved ones of those murdered. For most people, their suffering is immeasurably increased. Knowing that the person who murdered their family member or friend, and who in many cases inflicted unimaginable terror, is alive and being cared for. Of course, putting the murder... All right, so... They, so these, these people are in mental anguish because they're the person who took their loved one from them is still alive um so let me ask you dennis would you look to the government to fix your life at that point by executing the person that whose continued existence is causing you pain because that's that's the argument that's the argument that they have it's it's not fair it's not fair and you know what it's not fair but you know what else is not fair executing innocent people can i just can I just say I hate Prager U and that be like the entirety of my contribution here? Okay. I feel like that's I feel like that's fine. Okay, that, that, that's, <laughs> this this one's fun. This one's fun. So boys. Oh God, this fucking guy. Uh, boys want arm candy. Men want someone who isn't on birth control. I don't care if the person I'm with is on birth control or not, because you know what? I'm on birth control. Them bad boys been snipped, so I don't care if she's on birth control. <laughs> Um, is loving. Yeah, of course, if you're in a loving relationship, you want someone who is you, loving. You get happier like about that. It's weird how that works. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, like, that's kind of redundant. Um, graceful. Uh, I mean, I can see the appeal of gracefulness, but have you tried, like, laughing with a partner at something clumsy that y'all have done together? That's a lot of fun. Um, who wants to buy a farm? No, thanks. I don't want a farm. 
like I do want a place with like a good amount of land, but that's because I'm I, I kind of hate neighbors. So I just want them to be far away. So if I have lots of land, then they are far away. <laughs> it's not that I want to farm. It's that I don't want neighbors. Uh, start homesteading. I'm not sure what he means by homesteading. Uh, um, I, if I had to guess, I would say that that's kind of like a um, uh, off the grid type of thing, which I can. It's, yeah, it's it's self sufficiency lifestyle. Yeah. It's 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 so, a step to the right of what me and my family have here. Like we're on well water, and if we were to just put ourselves on solar panels, which is impossible where I am, but if we were to put ourselves on solar panels, then that's kind of where we'd be. Grow your own food, yeah. make your own electricity, get okay. your water from the ground. That type so of I am actually, I'm in the process of getting solar panels installed. I wish we were done by now because I went for two days at Christmas time without solar panels or without solar panels, without electricity. We were snowed in, no electricity, two days. Um, the kids actually had a lot of fun with it. Like it got cold in the house. It got down to about six degrees, five or six degrees. Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. It's yeah, prob it's it's probably lower than forty, but above thirty five, somewhere in there. Um, it was cold. Um, yeah. So homesteading, I can kind of see the appeal of some of that, but not really. Um, to a degree, like I would have liked to have had my solar panels for Christmas because Christmas Day was bright and sunny, but we still had no electricity. <laughs> I like online games, so no. Yeah. Well, I didn't say I like the, No, I, like I, I don't internet. want to be disconnected from the grid. I just want to be able to be disconnected from the grid in an emergency situation and it not affect mm. me that much. Um homeschool the kids. No, I actually have done that. Uh I have no desire to do that again. Um yeah, school is wonderful. Uh who's obsessed with cows? Obsessed with cows. Why I, would you want someone who is obsessed with cows? Look. Unless you're a furry. I, like, if you're into I, that. I understand that cow print string bikinis can be really, really sexy to a particular demographic of people. But I don't think that's what he's talking about. So I don't think we agree. Ocean Wave says 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So I guess I was off on my estimate. <laughs> Get wrecked, kid? I don't know. Um, and is dying to make fresh anyone who hasn't seen anyone who didn't see this when i first pulled it up try and guess what the last words are gonna make gonna be i guarantee you won't get babies? it if you didn't see it fresh babies fresh babies did, did you know, you've seen this already though right i i glanced i oh, don't i've you didn't my read to the end memory's awful okay it's not babies can you get one more guess and then i'll okay it. so i i'm assuming it's not cows and fresh milk because that would make way too much sense you know, we'll go with milk. That's the one that makes sense. Uh, half a point. Breast milk ice Breast cream. Milk. Breast milk <laughs> ice cream? <laughs> Breast milk ice cream. I, I just... Why? Why that specifically? I don't know. I don't why? know. Why? Like... I, I I joked about that. I have joked about that in the past, but I don't like I think it would have to be like like if she had come up to me with like ice cream that she had made out of her own breast milk and like just been like, I dare you to eat this, I would have eaten it. But uh -huh. like no, that's not something that I look for in a woman, someone who wants to make fresh breast milk ice cream. No. That's the... Oh. Ugh. Oh. Booba ice cream to go with the booba tea. To go with the booba tea! Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's... I mean, like... If that's your thing as a couple, go for it. But like, that is weird. <sighs> I'm never gonna kink shame except in one scenario, but uh, but I I will. Look, I personally do not like this person. I've I've seen enough of their tweets. 
without without you giving them to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, also, like, this guy's definitely got some, like, misogynistic streaks going on in this tweet. Like, th this tweet's a little bit dog whistly. You know, more than a little bit, but... um, Yeah, so it's like, I, I, I'm not inclined to give this person the benefit of the doubt here. Anyway, I think yeah. this is the last tweet. Uh, yeah, last tweet. Abortion is never medically necessary, says Lilla Rose. Um, except for all of the instances for, where it is. Yeah. Like, like ectopic pregnancies. You can find a whole list of women that have died because of the overly restrictive abortion laws that are uh, in place in the States. Uh, Sirs fans are apparently exactly the sort of people to have in my chat right now. Talking about booba tea. Oh, yeah. And uh, ice cream made from any animal milk is made from breast milk, right? I mean, like, technically, yeah. But, like, there's a whole pasteurization process. And, like, I don't know. I still think it's weird that some guy in ancient times looked at a cow and said, I would like to drink the secretions that are coming out of that thing's udder. I mean, you got to think, back then... We were also testing which roots to eat based on how many people in the villages died. Yeah. Right. And so, some, somebody at some point licked a beaver's butthole and was like, that tastes like vanilla. And raspberries. And raspberries. Yeah. That's, that's a real thing. I, it's not very common, but there are some products out there where if it says... Um, natural and artificial flavors is one of the ingredients. If it's like vanilla or raspberry or strawberry flavored, there is potentially a chance that one of the natural flavors they're using to get the vanilla or strawberry or raspberry flavor is the anal secretions of a beaver. Because apparently beavers' anal secretions taste like vanillas or raspberries or strawberries. I need less vanillas in my life, and I need more, no more of this, please. I don't know. I just want to know who was the first person that licked a beaver's asshole and said, that tastes yummy. I'm going to make candy with it. Do we, what is the, what is the excretions called? What is the name of it? It's the secretions from the anal gland. It's not actually from its butthole. It's like a little gland that's like right next to the butthole. Hold on, let's see here. Pumpkin, Pumpkin J says vanilla beans are a thing. It's like, yeah, yeah. If I want vanilla flavor, you go for the vanilla. Like, I'm going to think vanilla beans before I think beaver asshole. <laughs> this, is, to remember the this is slightly name. more disgusting than a uh, Kevin Sorbo or Kanye tweet. Um, I assume you're talking about the abortion is no, never medically necessary and not the beaver asshole licking. Hold on, let's see here. Who discovered... Castorium. I'm on the beaver asshole now. I don't give a shit about Lilla Rose. Yeah, you know, we all know that we all know that abortions are medically necessary. No, okay, so Jassa confirms no, I mean the beaver. <laughs> Everybody's on the beaver. Castorium. Okay, so there's two potential correct answers here. It is either a a ubiquitous piece of knowledge from ind uh, indigenous people in Mesoamerica or or it was discovered by explorer Hernan Cortez. So it, it was, so so it's indigenous people that knew. So it's it. definitely the indigenous people. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I'm not giving Cortez explorer. credit. Like, I mean, if you if you want to say that Cortez liked to lick beaver assholes, I I'm okay with that being a, a piece of information that we start circulating about Hernan Cortez. But I'm not going to credit him with a discovery that was like. Yeah, I, I fully expected that that was going to be the answer that like, no, the Native Americans just knew about it and sometimes used it to like sweeten drinks or some shit. It's like because that's the kind of thing that like the people that live in an area know about the local fauna and flora and stuff yeah. like that. Usually the knowledge goes back past human history. So like I refuse to believe that Cortez was the first, but I fully believe that he went around tasting beaver anuses. <laughs> Uh, yeah, why do I, fucking Europeans, man, trying to take credit for everything. Uh, <laughs> but says, I think I'm going to mute the stream for 30 seconds. I mean, we're not the ones who have to hear you vomiting, so I don't know what <laughs> muting it for 30 seconds is going to do. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah, abortion is medically necessary in many scenarios. Um, that's it for tw tweets. Uh, thanks for joining me. Go lick a beaver's ass. <laughs>